Um, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, our subject tonight is on our philosophy discussion is, and I have to read it, I'm afraid, um, uh, eternal progress of the soul. What does that mean? And what would be the effect? No, it isn't that. No, it's not. Next month, so I've still got it wrong. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can you just remember that that yes. was just a trial for next month, okay? <laughs> she joked earlier, by the way, let's not get it wrong. She got it wrong. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I would. Anyway, our subject for tonight is God and religion, which is uh, an easier title. I should have stuck with that to start with. Anyway, um, and um, I know there's not so many of us joined this evening. Maybe the subjects put people off, <laughs> um, but perhaps that might help us um, not having so many people to be perhaps a little bit more expressive um, and to be able to uh, share our opinions um, and because obviously they're worthwhile and also they're very subjective. So um, is there anyone who would like to start on this subject? I actually think it's quite a difficult one this evening, but that's my opinion. Anyone like to share their thoughts about God and religion? Nobody? Thank you for joining us, everyone. Oh, no. to see you all. Thank you. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, uh, Judy, uh, Julia has very Let's kindly stuck a hand up, which I'm really grateful for. Thank you. Oh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, uh, John and Simone Hi. and Daniel and everybody. Um, well, only this morning I was looking at the subject and I thought, this discussion about religion and God, why... I mean, I mean, I have read so many books and so many papers and articles about God, about religion. And in the end, I really, I'm still stupefied about the fact that there are so many people, so many religions, and that people dare to say that their God is different than, than mine. And... Um, so in the end, um, I wish that that part of the world of our existence, and that's, that's a, a deep felt wish, I must, must say, that we could, could go back into time, in time, you know, when everything started. And I don't know when that would be or whatever. And that there would be just one honest person, and I, well, I, I don't know how to express myself best, but it is such a shame. And I would have liked, I was thinking about it, shall I be so bold as to ask? Let us listen to one song as an introduction. I'm very fond of music. The, 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 the song One God, song by Johnny Mattis or by Barbara Streisand. Just because that unfolds everything. Why are we fighting? Why are we even discussing religion? When for myself, I'm so arrogant as to think that my God is a very, very kind woman or man. And why doesn't everybody see that? And is there arrogance in there? Is it conviction? Is it like, I know how the world turns and I don't. So I am very interested to know what all the other people present here have to say about this subject, mm -hmm. because honestly, I don't know. I love the God that I love, that I am the God part of my, that God spark inside of me that I always propagate. I have, I, I have only just discovered it. If you look at my, my, my life, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I found this religion that I can embrace fully and everything that it stands for. As long as people really from their core accept that we can all have a little bit of a different view on that same subject, but that the values 
within the seven principles are so true and that they are free for everyone to interpret by themselves, not because somebody else is telling us, you need to look at this this way, you need to look at that that way. Because freedom, the freedom of thought is like holy to me. And at the moment, this is all that I have to say as an introduction. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Juliet. That's very kind of you to put yourself forward like that. Thank you and express your views. Okay. Anyone else like to have a say? Daniel? Uh, yes, yeah, just to I really appreciate Juliet stepping forward with that because it, it reminded me a lot of the experience versus the perception. And I believe there's a I hope I get this um, somewhat close to the, the words. Uh, it just reminded me of this, and that is, uh, I do not want my idea of you that is too easy and it is not real. Rather, I choose to uh, receive the experience of you. Um, it's sort of the, the quote I had heard before when it comes to my understanding of God. Uh, grew up very much with a God that was very uh, angry with me. Uh, and and required a lot of uh, worship rather than devotion and was very confusing and it, as Juliet was saying coming into spiritualism finding um, a better understanding of the freedom and I, I realized that for so long my idea of God is what I what I stuck to and that's not where my freedom was it was more so in the experience of what God was for me uh, again just want to just simply share that before I forget those words um, because it, it sparked in me when Juliet was sharing so thank you thanks Daniel that's great Tim hi okay how can you unmute how can I okay um, first of all, if you're talking about God, over 80% of the 7.7 billion people on the planet believe there is a divine intelligence, a higher being. So whatever religion they've chosen, they still believe there's a higher being involved within that. So that's a pretty high percentage isn't it, of humans believing it. Mm. The other mm. thing is that whatever religion they have, apart from the you know, agnostic, is they believe this higher intelligence. They believe that there are angels. They have different words for it. They believe there's a heaven. They have different words for it. But essentially, pretty much every religion you choose to look at across the planet is believing in the same sort of things. What's, what's separating it is a sort of language difference, I suppose, in a way, which has created the divine. But in truth, you know, they're all the same. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you is, was that something Stephen Upton once said is that, you know, when asked, will we ever prove life after death? He said, no, we never will, because each one of us is on our individual journey and each one of us will come to that proof in our own time, in our own way. Mm -hmm. So discussion is really about, does God exist? Well, if we're a spiritualist, yes, he does, because we've reached that tipping point. We know that there is something other than um, an end, darkness. Now, that's an interesting point to come to, because as spiritualists, we have accepted there is a God. Whatever you want to call that, divine presence, whatever you want, whatever word you want to use, there is a higher intelligence, a directing intelligence. But we also have to accept that he doesn't dirty things, or he or she or it keeps out of it because we've got to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. That's part of the journey in the physical. That's part of the pilgrimage here. So, you know, the discussion about you know, should we have a, a spiritualist religion is pretty much irrelevant, really. Should we have any religion is irrelevant, really. It, it's just something that's been created because I suppose humans can get their heads around it. But the vast majority of us believe there is a higher intelligence, a directing force. Hmm. I think we just have to accept that at this point. 
Okay. Does that sort of kill the discussion? No, <laughs> no not at all. all. Not at all. It opens it up. No, okay. no, it's brilliant. No, excellent. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. June. Hi. Lovely to see you again. Hi. Um, I, I totally agree with what Juliet is saying and also Tim. And I think when we come into spiritualism, um, we find our own way and we sort of drip fed in a way little by little and we accept it. I think the only thing that I find very difficult about attaching religion and God together is, is the people who actually run the religious organisations. And they're the ones who actually decry other religions and don't accept it as the whole, that actually God is there in everybody. And I find that is the most difficult thing. You're, you f I feel as though there's a battle going on with whoever's ruling or running the, the different churches, and they don't want to come together because they can find fault with other religions, and yet they, they don't seem to accept that we have one God. And it's how we feel personally inside about our God. And it doesn't matter really whose God it is, it's one God. It's, it's just the religious side of it that gets in the way. And that's what makes people angry or they want for a discussion about it. But it's like accepting. I accept, I accept that God's part of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't worry too much about other religions because if you start to, um, take on board other people's comments and other religious leaders comments you start to actually devalue what you've already learned do you understand and i feel personally spiritualism has has opened the world up for me it, it actually means more to me than than anything really and i wished i'd found it out when i was a teenager like all you lot did, but not me. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's quite so. Mine's quite no, no, that's, that's what I find the difficult bit about religion, connecting it with, with God. It's it's not that. It's not God. It's the religious side yeah. of it yeah. and how we perceive it. Yeah, that, That's my idea. Thank you, June. That's great. Thank you. Robert. Yeah, pretty much just like to kind of echo what June had said it's it's not God that I struggle with but it's the the religion the organized religion part that seems to kind of you know come along with an awareness of God I but I, I believe that spiritualism is the probably as good as it's going to get at the moment I uh, as far as like organized religions go uh but I was thinking whether or not that does an awareness of God actually hinder like our development as you know like mankind as souls because I kind of I kind of get the feeling that God just wants us to go on with things you know and whereas like when when we're aware of this higher intelligence higher power instead of sometimes dealing with the things that we need to deal with and actually like trying to to elevate our consciousness we always go to we always go to god you know for for help when we're kind of in our darkest times which is probably right and correct but i wonder if we didn't do that how we would evolve and how we could evolve so I don't know if like having an awareness of God in spiritualism or other religions or even just throughout the world is actually like a help or a hindrance. Hmm. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, um, and um, I, I'd like to, I may just share my thoughts. Um, some of you might know this, but um, I come from a background where my mother was a Jew and my father was Presbyterian. And they, in their infinite wisdom, decided that my sister and I, we would not be christened as people were in those days and probably still are. And, we, and they left us free to find our own religion. And I became an atheist. 
a very, very staunch atheist because I didn't like what I saw around me. I didn't like what was going on in churches and uh, religious establishments. I didn't like the control aspect of it, you know, because I felt that the people running them were controlling the masses, so to speak. So I became this very, very staunch atheist until I became a spiritualist. And when I was an atheist, I can assure you, my life was a lot easier, a hell of a lot easier. You know, I didn't have to think about what was going to happen and who did what and the ethics or the morals or my conscience, which is the big one for me, because I feel that our conscience is part of our spirituality, a big part of our spirituality. And I even remember a time when I thought, and I remember where I was when I thought it, that the, it doesn't matter what you think, that your thoughts are your own and you can think what you like and that's the only thing that you can do. And now, of course, I know since I've been a spiritualist how wrong I was. But I have to say that I'm maybe just, again, it's just an opinion because who, who has the definitive answer on anything in this subject? But I feel that coming into spiritualism, I came in through my awareness of change, transformation. I came in because something was happening to me and whatever spiritualism offered in those days, it met my needs and that opened me to a, a bigger power. And that is how I found God. But my God is not male or female. And please remember, I'm not disrespecting anybody else's opinion. You are very free to believe what you like. But I, mine doesn't have a gender. And mine is a power that is there. Yeah, I, yes, but it is for me a high consciousness, if you want to call it that, an omnipotent power that pervades everything living. But it doesn't judge and it doesn't interfere. This is my opinion. And it lets us, whatever that power is, lets us do what we like until we find out that we're doing it wrong and has no right to interfere. And that's how I see it. And I have to say, and I don't want to get political, please, but if, if you look at what's going on today in the Ukraine, how many of us are praying for peace in Ukraine? And how far is that, are those prayers going? Because I'm not seeing a difference. And yet I would say half the world is praying for Ukraine at the moment. And everybody in our world, uh, our part of the world, is um, incredibly interested in what's going on and very, very uh, both sympathetic and empathetic to the people of Ukraine. But nothing we're doing is making a difference and God isn't stepping in. So for me, that energy that's within me is the same as it's in the grass outside my front doorstep. And that's as high as it gets. And I know that that power, that God force, if you like, is something that can help me to create, but can bring out the best or the worst in me. But it's my decision. And that's my opinion. OK. So, Carolyn, hi. Good to see you. Sorry, you're still muted. Yeah, okay, hi. Um, who knows what difference your prayers make? I believe that prayers have energy. I believe, depending on the prayer, they're positive. Um, why does God allow this sort of thing to happen? Or is it, as, as Juliet uh, Jones said, you know, it's up to us how we live our lives and what we do. And, uh, but I do, um, I do think prayer makes a difference. So maybe it's not as awful as it could be because of our prayers. I'm not saying it's good, but maybe it's not quite as bad as it could be. My mother used to hate the word sinner. You know, she'd go to church and the, the minister would say, you know, you sinners. And she would say, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> Uh, and I remember having a pillow fight with a friend when we were 10 and my friend had to go to confession because of a sin. It's like, how can pillow fighting be a sin? And so I don't think God and religion 
go together. I think they'd like to go together. I, I tend to say I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. I've always said that because I find that religion messes up, messes us up so much, whether we're called sinners, uh, whether we have to genuflect to the east or the north or the west. I, I liken spirituality to a mountaintop with several paths going up it. Um, God's at the top, and we're all at the bottom. We have different paths to go up to get to God. Um, but I find religion is too limiting because usually it's run by men. I hate to say it, it's mostly men, not women. Um, but it's uh, it's too dogmatic. Uh, whereas spirituality, I mean, it has its dogma too. Um, you know, SNU has its dogma, but it's more open. It's not as condemning. It allows you freedom to explore and to challenge and to question. Um, Absolutely. I think I don't think God is a little man or a woman on a on a cloud plucking a harp. I do think it's an energy um, that maybe helps the world go around. And I think all the different and I think talking with spirit and getting that reassurance, communing, communing with spirit and getting a reassurance. Um, Somebody, I think it was either Tim or Robert said that we're sort of stuck with the spirituality level that, that we're at right now and I don't agree with that I think that it's up to us to uh, get more of the philosophy I know it's slow I know that you know we'd like to see 30 40 50 people attending these sort of classes but unless we focus and encourage people to look at the speaking look at the discussions look at the philosophy it's not going to happen and until we stop churches saying to, to, to mediums um, you know, make it short because they just want the evidence. Um, yeah, we, we, and also I think the big flaw that we have is that we try and hire one medium for two functions. They're both different energies, evidential and, and philosophy. And I do think we should try and get two mediums, one who's a speaker, one who's an evidential to go to some of the church, to go to the church services. And I think that's where Zoom can help because it's easier. We don't, you know, you don't get paid, you don't have to travel. Um, but I think it's up to, to uh, for, for, for us to become much more aware of the philosophy where, you know, in the past, apparently they would have a two hour service and, you know, one and a half hours would be philosophy and half a minute, half an hour. Because I think people who know about and feel like we know that spirit exists beyond death, we're wanting more, we're searching for more, we're looking for a richness. That keeping hearing about, you know, the granny or the aunt who ate peas and, you know, lost her dentures, you know, great for people who are searching for that for feeling like they need to know if life continues on um i think i think there will be much more of a movement if we could encourage people to and i think getting rid of the word philosophy people don't like it it reminds people of greece you know and, and greek philosophers i think it's much more about inspired speaking discussion um, firing up that part of spirituality, but I've kind of gone off. Sorry, it's my bit of a bit of a hobby horse. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, you're very welcome. Nice to hear from you, Carol. Hi. I'm just going to add in, uh, yeah. Simone. Just uh, I guess my journey's been different. Mm. Uh, certainly, when we think about religion and God, people do connect two together and see them as one and over the same thing. And, and that's certainly not the case for me. I see them as very different things completely. Uh, and equally, when they think about religion, the majority of people, certainly that I speak to, not just in spiritualism, but out with spiritualism, see it as a very negative thing. So we've already heard some of those words about it being controlling and a run by men. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I've just realised why spiritualism is so wonderful, because it's run by women. So there we go. So we, we found the perfect religion. But seriously, there is a difference. And be, being brought up a spiritualist, I didn't have that negative feeling towards other religions uh, because I think whether even you as, a, as an atheist, Simone, you know, we all, I think, venture into spiritualism probably from a ne negative experience. 
that you've experienced somewhere else, maybe in a religion or just your perception of it. And I guess I, I never really had that because I never really knew enough about them to, to feel bad enough about it. And when I went to university, I studied religion, religion and law, and I found it fascinating. And I had no interest in what, so I studied divinity. Some of the people doing that became Church of Scotland ministers, so, so they were Christians. It was a Christian college, effectively. Uh, but that was never obviously my intention. Uh, but lots of people who did it actually ventured into business. The majority actually go into the business world to don't go into religion. Because you're taught to analyze religion and what religion teaches you. And, and it, what's fascinating is how religions evolve over the years. What is true is that every religion believes in some form of God or a deity, whatever word, word you want to use. So that's at the core of all religions. But as religions evolve, the start off is people believing in something. And then as it moves on, as it's people start to worship that something, and then it becomes part of their life. They create rules around it. And effectively, it becomes what we know today as religion, a way of life. And whilst some people might say, I'm not religious, essentially you are, if you follow your own belief, that is your religion. It's maybe not Christianity or Judaism or whatever, uh, it becomes your religion. And I think it's fascinating that as religions evolve over centuries, thousands of years, is to take on more of a, should we say, a dictatorial role, where they, they, they impose rules and regulations and say this is how you should live your life. What I'm interested in thinking about is in the future, is that where spiritualism is going to end up? Because every other religion does it. So there is, there's none that's different. We are one of the newest religions that are around. But if you think of Mormonism, which is of a similar age to us, they've very much gone down that road. It just happens to be spiritualism hasn't. And I think one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of spiritualism is that it's a religion of religions. So we've found a house, a uh, religion, that encompasses all religions. And I think that's our future, to get that message out there, that regardless of your faith, now or in the past, spiritualism has an open door for you. And where we encourage you to, to search your own, for your own truth and your own relationship with God. But for me, like many of you, you know, God's not a man or a woman to me. It's, it's part of me. It's part of my consciousness. And, and that's what I desire to understand more in the future. But it's fine to have that belief and think, okay, God's there. I go to God when I, when I need that, that help, that support. But how does it help me in my everyday life? How do I practically apply that? Well, I do that through my religion of spiritualism. So it has to have a function, my belief in God. And that's where religion comes in. It provides the function to help you live your life. And that should be in a better way. Um, and whilst every religion believes there is a God, uh, some of them do believe their God is very different to every other religion's God. Uh, and actually some religions have more than one God because they, it just happens to be in the West, we're so used to monotheisms that believe in one God like spiritualism does. But there's many others out there that believes you have gods for different functions in life. And, and again, if that suits the followers, then that's absolutely fine. So I think really what I wanted to throw out there is we, we get caught up in terminology and what words mean. And I think we need to look beyond that and think, I think we're all in agreement here. God means something different to each of us. But the word God helps cement our thoughts as to what that is. Mm -hmm. And likewise, I think we need to rethink religion and how we see religion, especially if we see it in a negative way. Is that not a way of life? It just happens to be what people follow. And that helps them live their life. Even though we might look at that and think it's weird and, you know, they're being dictated to from up high from their leaders or whatever. But some people need that uniformity and they need that, a degree of control to be able to function in life. So uh, sad as you and I might think that is, but that's how people operate. Mm -hmm. And even with all that's going on in the world now, uh, you know, some people 
you know, we all know when it comes to war in particular, religions have created many wars in this world. But genuinely, that's because people have believed that's the right thing to do. They're fighting for their cause, even though you and I might think that's ludicrous and certainly not in the best interests of humanity. So I guess really, as I say, I just wanted to share thoughts just about mm -hmm. let's perhaps redefine how we think about the word God and mm -hmm. the word religion. Uh, but both are very important, I think, to us all. Thank you. Thanks, John. I just wanted to add, you know, um, some years ago, uh, as many of us here, um, the same as every, many of us here, um, I had to do a speaker's diploma and um, I wanted to do the speaker's diploma. And the part of that um, diploma that I dreaded was the section on world religions. I really, I was bored by religion. I didn't want to, I didn't want to study. I didn't want to know, to be honest. Um, and it was the, for me, it was the very best thing I ever did out of all the courses I've done. And I've done a lot. That was the one that I enjoyed the most because it made me understand why people are like they are, what makes people the way they are. And it also helps us to become more tolerant. And I feel that maybe that there should be more done about sharing. I know we've got interfaith, but I, I'm so sorry if I sound very negative, but I don't feel that's going anywhere at the moment. But I've, I feel that if we understood more about other religions, I'm not saying for one minute that we're gonna convert to them, but at least it would help us to meet people halfway and understand what makes them tick, what makes them the people they are. And I know that I thoroughly enjoyed that course more than any other course I've done. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Actually, that reminds me of something, someone it, during lockdown, it, we feel we've been in it for years. We have, but it feels much longer. Uh, but I did a, a session on Zoom and it was part of an interfaith group, just when you mentioned interfaith. Yeah. And it was almost like a buddying thing. So they would bring people together from different religions. <clears throat> so the organization chose the people because of the religions and they put us together in a forum like this. And then they split you off with each other. And basically you were to talk about your religion without mentioning what the religion was. And it was fascinating actually, because everybody was talking about what it meant to them and how they lived and, and uh, I was put together, you wouldn't believe this, but I'm sure they did it deliberately just because probably they despised us both, but because uh, it's largely run by a bunch of Christians, but there we go. Uh, but they put me together with a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> and I just, when I found that out at the end, I just thought, oh, but it really backfired on them because obviously we didn't mention the, the, the religion at all, uh, other than what it meant to us and, and it was amazing. It was as if that person was describing spiritualism to me. Wow. That's, that's exactly what yeah. it was like. And when I was talking to me, it said, oh, yeah, that's great. And then at, right at the end, it says, right, I need to know you must be a witness. I'm uh, going, I'm not. I'm a spiritualist. And at that point, it did take a deep breath right enough. You know, I think they thought he'd been, you know, Satan had been uh, brought into his living room. Uh, but he was fascinated. And he said, you know what? I would never have thought spiritualism was anything like that and when we came back together in the main group other people were saying the same thing so what we were describing is obviously what was right for us and how we saw our religion uh, but what we heard from each other was what we wanted to hear it's that which we had in common now we all know there's a big difference between spiritualism and the jehovah's witnesses uh, but there's a lot that we have in common. And I guess that's the case with every religion. We can find that common factor. And I just found that session absolutely fascinating. Uh, and it, there's done a few of them. Uh, but maybe that's what we need to do with other people sometimes. Even within spiritualism, just say, describe how you see spiritualism. We've done it on these forums. And, and I guess we all can agree to a certain degree as to what that definition is but there'll be something unique to us as well too. And to me, that's what makes spiritualism great. Uh, I hope spiritualism has got an advantage. It's an open philosophy, encourages people of all faiths and none. It's very diverse and, and inclusive. I like all that about it. It's unique. But some people might come into spiritualism and say that there is no substance. 
and it's true there is no substance the substance to me through my discovery that our philosophy is really not that in depth even carolyn's mentioned that you know you don't get it from our church platforms largely because the people demonstrating and talking about it don't have a great understanding of the philosophy of spiritualism anyway they're not up there to do that they're up there to give a message which is a very different job that's exactly the point that carolyn was making mm -hmm. so but i think the further you go in and you define philosophy and the philosophy of spiritualism the i'm afraid the more rigid you do make it and that's the trap that all religions fall into so in a way i hope we don't go down that route but it seems to be almost inevitable for every religion and you just need to look at how we are as the snu and as an organization now we're much more organized and uh the, the way in which we describe a religion and demonstrate a religion is is certainly more formal now than it ever was before and that's what happens with all religions so okay thank you very much that's great thank you juliet Hi again. Uh, uh, I must say I, I, I'm so happy with this session. So many opinions, so many um, views on this subject that's so dear to myself. And um, what I, I made two notes here that I didn't want to forget. Uh, one is about uh, praying. Uh, Simone, you mentioned something about the prayer. Um, in April, I'm going to uh, do a workshop, finding your own prayer. And um, I have done it before, but and it is quite a challenge. And uh, it's only last week that I have really felt in despair when I was praying and, and uh, sending absent healing out uh, to the Ukraine and to all the people in despair. And uh, I was almost crying because I thought, I feel so helpless. And um, it, well, at, at, at the moment, personally, I'm in some kind of growth spurt. That there's something developing within. And the other note that I made is about white light. Because I found in my despair, and that's always how it works with me, I can be so become so emotional that um, there was a cloud of white light and I was in the middle of it. And there was nothing. And um, I found that from then, when I teach a class on SNUI, I, a meditation class, I try to introduce the students to that point where there's white light. No guides, uh, I believe in guides, but I just be yourself, try to find yourself, you know, breathe in God love and breathe out the white light and envelop yourself in that white light where you are with your own system of, 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 of body, mind, spirit, whatever. And in that stillness, you will find that what you are doing when you're praying or sending out absent healing is so pure. And I try to direct my healing towards world leaders. May they get a right uh, way of thinking. And what is right? I cannot define right. But, um, you know, to get insight, to, 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 to not create too many problems for people. But sometimes I see things and I know that prayer is being received, maybe not for the greater, for, not for everybody, but I have had visions of people finding a place to hide, finding a nook, finding a, a building, finding a hole in the floor. And maybe they were the only ones that survived in, 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 yeah, in, in a huge area. Did they receive that spark of light, of, of, of discovering that there is um, a possibility for them to, to save themselves in order to, to survive? 
So, well, my conviction is so intense that our prayers are being heard somewhere, are being received somewhere by a spirit, by a soul, by someone in need. And maybe at one point, even one of our world leaders, appointed or not appointed, will get some huge insight about goodness. And I do have to believe in that just because of that white light, mm -hmm. because there is no, uh, nothing else there but peace, but goodness, but non-judgment, just about that God spark, God, that light. And um, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Because the non-judgmental part is also very, very important. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. You're welcome. Anybody else like to share their thoughts? Daniel. Yes, hello. Uh, so uh, I get to be a national representative for various countries, um, smaller countries that are, they're not small, but large countries that have small amount of uh, SNUI members. And one of the things that continues to come up almost monthly is the topic of religion and what does it mean and how does it make it different and why does spiritualism allow other religions and um, we've heard everything some speak from a catholic perspective some speak from uh, you know uh, part of hinduism shintoism buddhism all these different religions come forward and in all of it what I can say that we were talking about the definition or understanding of religion and what we've kind of likened it to is that of consciousness, that religion or our religions, how they all interact, the similarities. We can say that there's a consciousness of us being, um, and I don't mean this, this uh, new age term of being woke, that's not what I'm talking about, I'm speaking more about waking up to the fact that we get to participate. And when we pray, we're conscious. When we, when we do many of the things that we do that we put under the title of religion or religious practices, there's a consciousness. And that when we stay in only uh, um, doing certain, uh, whether we call it ritual or ceremony, only in rote because we are told we have to, that that usually keeps us stuck in the past of memories, rather than keeping us in the, the present of here or looking more about progressing towards the future. And for me, that was very much opened my mind. And when I came to, uh, into spiritualism, I was very surprised by how, what to me felt, how, how open-minded spiritualism was. Now I'm talking about the religion of spiritualism, maybe not every spiritualist, but um, the open-mindedness uh, was what really drew me forward because for me, again, this idea of consciousness, I get to be conscious without reprimand. I get to participate without being called a sinner as though I think I'm the only one in control. And that's, that's where I've sat with, and I, I really have to think those of other religions, I get to thank them for bringing forward a different understanding of what it means to have religious practices, more of being, like I said, conscious of what I'm doing, conscious in the religion that allows me to be conscious, participate, to have responsibility, and yet also accountability. And that's really changed my idea of, of from where I've come from in the past to where I'm headed. And I think as John was speaking about having the experiences with others, when we step away from the title, the word, the role, we seem to find a lot of similarities because our mind isn't stuck on what we think we're supposed to do. If I meet another religion, they're going to attempt to convert me. So I better make sure I stand up tall for myself. But what if instead we simply, as been mentioned all throughout this evening, the understanding, you know, what that means and maybe looking at the separation of that, but I, I really want us to, to 
take this on is this idea of consciousness when we think of religion, because that's really helped me, just me on my path, to be more open-minded to what comes forward. And I, I hope you know someone can also take an understanding of that and, and let that help them to be more open-minded as long uh, as well. So thank you. Mm, thank you very much. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Anybody else like to say a few words? Tim. Thank you. I'm, I'm, coincidentally, which is the way it happens, I've got a, a, a Deepak Chopra quote, which is about consciousness. Let's just read it to you. Uh, before this, science declared that we are physical machines that have somehow learned to think. Now it dawns that we are thoughts that have learned to create a physical machine. Hmm. That's consciousness. That's hmm. what it's about. And we don't know why we're conscious. We just know we are. And I think that's, that's, that's what we've got to get our heads around because that's how we interpret, you know, our, our direction of travel. Um, so if you, if you put the religion word aside, you put the God word aside, um, we only use those because they describe something that we can get our heads around. We put those to one side. It is actually consciousness that we're talking about. And that's the key because we've got to think differently. If we start on the basis of consciousness, we end up with an open-minded world. So science and all, all the other things, philosophy is open-minded. If we start the other way around, which unfortunately we've lived with for several hundred years, is we start with science and, and, and biology. We start from the wrong end and we end up with a closed mind at the top of the, the tree. And that's what we've got to try and get our heads around, which is it is about consciousness. We are conscious beings, but we're on this pilgrimage into this physical. And, and that's what we've got to get our heads around. Why are we here? What do we achieve while we're here? And, and once we get into that, it's what Stephen said, it, we, it's an individual journey, and we will find where we're going by taking the journey. That's all it's about. So unfortunately, as you said, as everybody said, and I agree with with Carolyn, you know, we get bogged down with religion in, and the rules of religion. And I was I was horrified to hear us say dogma, SNU dogma. When I came to it, there was no creed or dogma in the SNU, and unfortunately, there is. And it's, and it's getting worse. <laughs> we, have, we have got to turn it back. The other thing, of course, is messaging has hijacked spiritualism. And it hijacked it because of two world wars. And it's probably going to do exactly the same again as we move into this part of the 21st century mm. because of revisionism. So you know, we, we have got a lot of work to do, but it is a personal work. It's an individual yeah. work. That's all it is. It's down to us, personal responsibility. That's the key, key, key principle. Thank you. I'd just like to come in on that because, be, sorry, Carolyn, I won't be a minute, but I just want to come in on that because I feel I have to somehow um, support the mediumship because I know that for a lot of us, not, no, not just one or two, but many of us, when we come into spiritualism, we, all we want are those messages. But that lasts about six months. In my experience of people within spiritualism, after six months, people then say, OK, I've had my message. I've had my evidence. What now? And that's when they look to philosophy. So I know that there is this movement going on within our movement that wants to almost eradicate mediumship from services and so on. And, and I'm not saying for one minute that I, I want, all I want is mediumship, not at all. But we have to, I feel we have to be there for people who may be not ready for the philosophy to show them that the whole point of what we do in mediumship is the philosophy. That's the point. And so I feel quite strongly that We've, we've, you know, we've got to try to meet people halfway, not to be too black and white and say our services must not have mediumship or they can only have philosophy and so on. Because I feel that there are many, many people like myself, when we, I came in, the mediumship only satisfies or fulfills us 
for a certain amount of time. And then we need to be there. That's when we come into our own. Sorry, that's my opinion. Sorry, Carolyn. Yeah. Mm, no, I, I, I agree. And I think, but I think 50 50, whereas now I would say it's possibly even 90% evidential and 10% philosophy. I mean, look at the number of people that are attending tonight compared to the membership. Yeah. 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 Um, um, but also um, in other courses and uh, other months that we've done as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe it's the subject. <laughs> The um, I wanted to go back to a little bit about Juliet and the power of, and the power of prayer and also what Tim was saying about consciousness. I think yes, I think I think if we can try and become as Daniel said woke or conscious or um, aware of the power that we have, mm -hmm. you know, we are conscious beings, we're sentient beings, and um, if we turn our mind to something, that's an energy. I mean, consciousness is an energy. And I think I may have touched this, but I'm not sure in this, in this arena, but about a, a, a study that was done at St. Francis Hospital in San Francisco, cardiac ward, and they grouped, uh, the nurses didn't know who was getting what, but the first person who came in as a patient was group A, the next patient was group B. And there was a group of A and a group B people out there in the city. And they just knew they were, they were um, focusing on three times a day, they would pray. For group A. Group B did not get prayed for. And after I think it was three months, they discovered there was a marked difference. Group A, who was being prayed for three times a day uh, by a bunch of people in San Francisco, they had less complications. They, If they were put on a cardiac machine, they were off it quicker. They didn't need antibiotics for various complications. And the recovery rate was quicker as well. I mean, there was a positive mm. impact from this. And this is just from, quote, just from prayer. But I think prayer makes a difference. And I think it's like putting out the consciousness or the awareness of, of for example, the people in Ukraine, you know, and, 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 and the animals. Because I saw that just recently, I think it was yesterday, all these abandoned animals and pets uh, because their owners couldn't take them. Um, anyway, yeah. So... I think the power of prayer, and I think there's certainly a place for religion. I think we're born in, I, in my case, I was born into religion. I, like you, Simone, was not christened. My parents decided to let me just decide, and a neighbor took pity on me and <laughs> took me off to, to a congregational church. Um, but no, it, and I explore different religions, and I like exploring religions, but I do prefer spiritualism for the freedom, and it has less dogma than other religions has, have. Thanks. Thank you. That's lovely. Thanks very much, Carolyn. OK, anybody else like to say a few words as we come to the end of our session? I just want to say really in, in, in sort of coming to the end of it now that the one thing that I feel that um, why people search for religion is the fact that they'll be with people of like mind. And that, I feel, is so important to have people that you don't have to explain yourself, your beliefs and so on to, you know. Um, and that actually helps people give them a set that sense of community, give them that sense of I, I have a very good friend um, it, who's a spiritualist, uh, a national spiritualist, and um, she was the Jehovah's Witness. And she said while she was with the Jehovah's Witnesses, the support she got from the community was second to none. You know, it was, you know, that everybody was there for everybody else. You know, the difficulty was getting out of the religion. That's when it became difficult. Um, but when, she, when you're in it, you know, you've got all those people that want to help and, and, they, and to turn to. And that's something that I feel that spiritualism could do a little bit more being more practical in the community, you know. Um, but that's and I agree, Simone. I think, you know, religions do have a purpose in life and and that's why people still follow them to this day. And yeah. even though they might not go to their own churches or synagogues or whatever, they still practice their religion and they do it within yeah. their own families and friendship circles. And it gives them that support network. But there is something comforting about coming together with people of like mind. You don't have to justify your thoughts and and you know they will understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Because other people might think you're weird. And we have that in spiritualism. 
uh, you know, mm -hmm. and going to my own church, you know, it is nice to be able to be able to sit there with like minded people. Mm -hmm. And that that's unique. That's special. Absolutely. I don't, ha don't have that in any other aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. But I know that those people will think a similar way to I do about God, about religion, uh, just about how we should be approaching life. And there's a great value to that. And yeah. it's a leveler as well, too. It gives you comfort, support, but it's a go to place when you need that, that guidance and uh, as mm -hmm. well as support and something to sustain you throughout life. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Okay. Anyone else like to say a few words before we finish? No? Okay, well, thank you all very, very much indeed for your very valuable contributions. Thank you very much indeed for, for joining us this evening and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye-bye for now. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.